Hi, I'm Al McRobbie at Sailing Company, and welcome to part two of our six-part series on oscilloscope basics. Uh, in part one, we had attached some probes to this O on oscilloscope here, and we discovered that one of the channels needed to have the probe compensation adjusted on it. So that's what we're going to do on this particular session here. Um, you can see that uh, channel one looks pretty good, channel two does not look so good. So we're going to concentrate on channel two right now and turn channel one off. And we're going to go and move this one up. I guess what I'll do is I'll trigger on it, use the touch screen, which is nice. And now we have a good display of showing what the problem is here. So whenever, you, whenever you're uh, trying to compensate your probe, what you're doing is you're matching the resistance and capacitance of the probe to the resistance and capacitance of the input circuit on this particular channel. And probes have an adjustment on them in their times 10 position. It's either in the BNC uh, shroud right here at the, right at the entrance to the scope, or it's on the probe somewhere out at the probe tip. In this particular case, our adjustment is right here. So you're usually provided with a tool to do this with your probe kits. So look for this little uh, plastic screwdriver. It helps to increase your amplitude display uh, a little bit here so that you can see the, the, uh, the wave shape that we're going to try to null out here. So as we adjust the probe, our compensation capacitor here, you can see that we can change the response of the of the, the waveform right here. So what we want to do is bring that up. I use a level line or one of the horizontal lines here so that I can make sure I've got it level. And I'm going to stretch this out so it's as long as possible. Let's move this, the trace over to the center of the screen. And let's get that, that trace to match the, the line on the graticule as closely as we can right here. Once we've got that adjusted properly, then remove your tool and make sure that you haven't uh, altered it by removing it. So that looks pretty good to me. So I can turn my other channel back on, move them both together, and they should look pretty good compared to each other right there, which they do. So I think uh, that's pretty good. Now remember that the once once the probe is compensated, it should once the probe is compensated, it, it should be kept with the channel that you adjusted it to because each of the channels is a little bit different in its uh, front end characteristics. And so what you're trying to do is match the probes to the individual channel. Um, most probe makers uh, provide a colored ring so that you can keep the probes straight and, uh, and keep them oriented with the right channel. So, Remember to do this. It's, uh, if you have a switchable probe times 1 times 10 type of probe, the, the compensation adjustment is applicable only to the times 10 position. So uh, just remember that. And um, if you're working with your probes in times 10, it's important to have the compensation adjusted right, because otherwise, obviously, the, the measurements that you make will be distorted if the probe isn't compensated. So that's, that's it for that uh, particular adjustment. It's very important, but it's easy to do. So thanks for watching.